Howdy! Welcome to Aspire Mountain Academy. I'm Professor Curtis, your instructor for this course in Introductory Statistics. In less than 10 minutes, this video continues the illustration of sampling distributions from the previous mini-lecture with an extended simulation of rolling dice. Let's get started. So, you saw in the previous mini-lecture, I'm assuming you watched it before you watched this one, we looked at an experiment where we designed uh, about rolling dice. So, we looked at the expected value, which is the mean value that we would expect to be in the population, 3.5. The idea being that as our sample grows and becomes larger and larger, we get the mean value of the population and the sample mean value that those two those two numbers will begin to to come together and be this one and the same and when they are then we know that our sample is large enough to resemble the population and we went through and we had these results you may recall from our dice rolling experiment notice how even though the mean value of each of the different trials can vary the sample mean as we continue to add outcomes to our sample it continued to grow and grow and grow and grow until it actually gets closer and closer to 3.5. So the more dice rolls we get into this, the closer this value is going to get to 3.5. Now, sometimes with these types of experiments, you see it going the other way. You'll see the number that is actually greater than the expected value, and it actually gets smaller and smaller and smaller until it reaches that expected value. But either way, you're going to approach that expected value for the population from one direction or the other. But this is only what we get when we're rolling for time. So we've got a sample size of 20. And we, we got 3.45, which is, you know, fairly close to 3.5. But how far do I mean, how close is close enough? Can we get something that's even closer to 3.5? And how many dice rolls do we need to get before we get there? Well, to do that, let's actually run a simulation. So, Stack Crunch is great because it gives you the ability to simulate a lot of different scenarios, and dice rolling is one of them. You can actually find that there in, inside Stack Crunch software. So, when you take that functionality out, you can actually put in whatever sample size you're looking for. So, if we roll our dice 20 times, it's going to give us 100 outcomes. And I actually did that. I actually ran through the simulation, and we see that. Our sample mean is now 3.44, so we went down just a tiny little hair, but that's okay, 3.44, 3.45, I mean, we haven't really changed all that much. The variance for our sample, 2.73, and of course, the standard deviation for the sample, you just take the square root, that gives us 1.65. So that's what we get with 100 outcomes. So at this point, we're going to take advantage of living in the 21st century and use simulations so we can get even more dice rolls out. We don't have to sit there and actually roll the dice. We don't even have to push the button on the simulation. All we have to do is tell them this is how many times you want you to roll the dice and the computer will boom do that for us automatically. So in an instant we can actually simulate what would take us a long time to actually do. That's the power of simulations. So we don't have to perform the actual dice rolls. The computer's going to do that for us. And of course, computers are made for counting and collecting numbers. So this is going to be a great job for a computer to do. And as I mentioned, we're going to get the results pretty quick, a lot faster than if we were to actually do it ourselves. So here's what we get when we actually look at the computer simulation. We do this, put this in Stack Crunch, and use that simulation feature that I mentioned, and then we're going to get the values for sample mean, sample variance, and sample standard deviation for 1,000 rolls and for 10,000 rolls. So how is this going to play out? Well, here's the results from the simulation when you run it. This is a results window that you get out of Stack Crunch when you actually run and do the simulation. Now, look up here to where we've got our table filled out. So notice the sample mean actually came up to 3.5 right here with a thousand rolls by the time you get to 10,000 the sample mean is just a little bit lower and we expect to see that there's going to be some oscillation you can see that here in the graph that as we start to come out here we get more and more rolls it quickly jumps up as we saw 
with the first four rolls of five dice, so by the time we get 20 outcomes, we're pretty close to that expected value of 3.5. So the average of one roll being greater than or equal to 3.5, we expect half to be, you know, greater than the, than the mean value and half to be less than. So it's going to come up here to around 50%. And here we see it's coming up and down. And the oscillations are pretty big here at the start, but then they start leveling out and they get smaller and smaller. And it's essentially a straight line, though technically it's still bobbing up and down a little bit, as we can see here with these values, 3.50, 3.49. So it's going to go down, up, down, up a little bit. Looking at the sample variance, with 100 outcomes, we've got 2.73. When we get to 1,000, it's 2.97. We get to 10,000, it drops back down a little bit to 2.90. Sample standard deviation comes up to 1.65. That kind of settles around 1.7, 1.72. So we can see here that these are the results for our simulation. Again, notice about half of the outcomes that we get when we run 10,000 outcomes are above the mean, and about half of them are below. It's not exactly 50%, but it's in the neighborhood. And this is what we would expect to see. Notice also that we have a condition that more or less is consistent around 1,000 outcomes. So about 1,000 rolls of the dice, at this point here, where we get 1,000 rolls of the dice, Notice how our graph pretty much starts to level out. So it's at this point here, at 1,000, that we have a sample size that's sufficiently large enough to resemble the population. Because at that point, there's not a whole lot of change that comes in the numbers that we get for our sample statistics after that point. And so this is the size that we need to actually have a sample that's large enough to represent the actual population itself. And that brings us to the end of this mini lecture. I hope you found it helpful. You can find more mini lectures for this and other courses at AspireMountainAcademy.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.